Um, we need a good singer. Uh, I don't know. I was looking up some stuff on Wikipedia. It's not really an intro, but I could tell you about it. It's also not really related to the episodes we watched. Well, let's hear it. Now you have to say it. Right. You've piqued my curiosity. Well, I listened to this audiobook about Dooku that's kind of told from the perspective of Ventress. So it was interesting kind of looking at those two characters. I had started playing the Star Wars Bounty Hunter game. Like, I got it on an emulator, like, for a GameCube. Uh, it's all right. <laughs> but uh, there's a character in there, and I didn't really get to get to her, but she, like, she captures Jango at one point. Um, let me see. Her name is Komari Vosa, and she is a former apprentice of Count of Dooku before he left the Order. But oh. she was captured by the Bando Gora cult. I don't know. There's there's some crazy stuff with Pelagus in this article. But anyway, they like tortured her, and then she ended up killing a bunch of them, turning to the dark side, and then taking over the cult. Oh wow! And so then they ended up capturing Django here in the game. He kills her somehow, right? But uh, Dooku sees this like he was there, and that's that is when he recruited him because the Bandogora were on uh, located on Colma, which is um, a moon of Bogdan. Mm, yep. Wait, which what's Bogdan? That sounds really familiar, but I don't remember. Oh, what's Bogdan? That's where Jango Fett was recruited by Lord Tyrannus. Exactly. It's what he says in episode two. But Bogdan, there's also there's twenty moons of Bogdan. Oh. <laughs> the but there's the Bog Moon of Bogdan, which is where uh, Kaibo Ren. <laughs> oh yes. To hide in the droids cartoon. <laughs> Yep, those are some great episodes. There's like Classic. 20 different uh, things intersecting in one place here. Hmm. So that, that that was pretty crazy. It's an important place. But yeah, she kind of reminds me of Ventress, which is why I was I was wondering if maybe they kind of took inspiration from this character. I guess I don't know when that hmm. bounty hunter game came out. I guess I think it's pretty old. But yeah, I don't know. 2002. No. So old. when did this? Clone Wars. Oh, eight. Okay. Well, I guess Ventress would have been introduced in the other Clone Wars, which was... Oh, yeah. What, 2003? That was right before Episode 3 came out, so... Okay, so it would have been right around the same time. I don't know. She seems similar, so I was like, oh, maybe they kind of wanted a similar kind of character because they liked him, liked her in that game, but the you know, game didn't really explore the character too much. Anyway... I like it. Yeah, it's cool. We can put that in somewhere here. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll introduce the show here because we haven't done that yet. Hi. Hello there. Hey. Live from Toydaria, oh. is Star Wars Total Rewatch. That's a bad Waddle voice. <laughs> how do you do? How do you do that? Is the Star Wars Total Rewatch still bad? I'm yeah, sorry, I can't do it. We don't watch Star Wars here; <laughs> only rewatch. <laughs> oh. Terrible. So bad. Yeah, welcome back to Star Wars Total Rewatch. Um, where we are totally watching all Star Wars, and we have now moved on to the Clone Wars. And we will probably be here for quite a while. Um, we are watching or rewatching things in the order of which they premiered. And so thus we have moved on into the more recent endeavors. Um, I'm Cody. I'm Aaron. <laughs> I'm Daniel. I'm Isaac. Yeah, if if you happen to be just joining us for the first time, this is a perfect place to hop on board the rewatch train because we are just starting a new series. Yeah. We watched the Clone Wars movie last time, and we are jumping into Season 1, Episode 1, Ambush. Ooh, Episodic man. podcasts. Episodes. I guess the movies are episodes, too. It's all one big TV show. A lot of episodes. That's true. <laughs> one big TV show of episodes here. Right, right. 
Yeah, you know, I was I actually found a list of the official chronological order to watch these in mm-hmm. from Disney Plus because there's that debate with the Clone Wars episodes on what order to watch them in. There's a debate? Well, yeah, they're yeah. Depending on what web forums you're visiting, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, because the episodes weren't all completely in chronological order. So on StarWars.com, there's an official chronology of them. But we are not doing it that way. We're doing straight through in air date order because... That's our trademark. Right, most of the time. Yes, except when it isn't. Yeah, but I was trying to find out like what exactly happened with that, and I feel like it was hard to find a straight answer. So if you... Uh, are one of the producers of the show, and you know for sure why they aired them that way, write in and tell us. Um, but the impression I was getting was that they mostly made them that way on purpose, and then later, in later seasons, they'd maybe say, uh, it might be kind of fun to go back and explore the backstory to this thing or this character. And so, in some ways, it's like watching the movies in chronological order versus release order, mm. where, like, the events might be out of order, but the way the story is told makes more sense in release date, right? Like they introduce characters or reveal plot lines and stuff that won't be effective if you watch the prequels first or something. So like in the episodes where it goes kind of back to tell a story, does it have relevance to like a continuing plot, main plot? Well, I don't, I mean, I might be wrong, but I was feeling like usually when they do that, they're assuming you've already seen the original episode. Yeah, I know. Yep. Um, I think there's maybe a few cases where they just shuffled the order around because they thought one one of them would be like a cooler way to start the season off. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. For the most part, it seemed like we should be able to follow it fine. I don't think it was anything like earth shattering. That was I don't know. Yeah, there's a couple things um, that come back into relevance later on, and they don't they don't really tell you anything about that. So it can get a, just a little bit confusing because you're like, wait, I thought that thing already happened, but I guess it, it's happening now. Or like it's these characters, or just stuff like that. But it's not too terrible. It really doesn't happen all that often either. But that's why I actually have in front of me a printed off list of the chronological order, so I can. You know, I can let you know when we're watching one that's way out of place and can tell you where it's supposed to go. Print it off. Oh, yeah. Wow, paper copy. What is this new technology? Um, so speaking of which, episode one here is actually the fifth thing on the list. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Really? What, what's, what's episode two? Uh, episode two comes right after this. They pretty much go in order from this point on. But like the first four, the first five things, Things. I'm sorry, this is like the sixth one on the list. The first five are a handful of episodes scattered throughout seasons one, two, and three. Well, how about the Clone Wars? When does that come? Okay, so, okay, here you go. Like the movie, movie The Clone Wars. It starts with a season two episode, then a later season one, then the movie. Okay. Then a couple of season three episodes, and then this. And then you're pretty much in order for a long time. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I feel like those random ones that we didn't see and we'll get to later on are just kind of about some different clone troopers and showing you backstories to people who we will get to know during the first season yeah but i don't remember the details so we'll we'll figure that out when we get there and try to figure out why they (laughs) um told it that way just along for the ride and what a ride it'll be (laughs) (laughs) so this was aired on october 3rd 2008 not too long after the movie, I think. I forget when the movie was, like, August? Yeah, August. So a few months after. Hmm. I feel like I'm spending a long time talking about the, the dates and stuff. That's not the most interesting part. You guys, what, <laughs> we can jump in or, with the actual or episode. Or is it? Yeah. The <laughs> actual episode. Right, so the episode is one of political intrigue as Yoda rushes to secure a peace treaty or negotiation with the Toydarians. The king of Toydaria, in which they can build a Republic outpost there. Supply outpost. But he gets ambushed, hence the um, the name of the, the series. And it is Yoda and uh, three clones who have to make their way through droid-infested lands to prove to the king of Toydaria that they are worthy of this negotiations. Prove that they, the, the Jedi can protect Toydaria. Yes. Because, like... 
joining a side would make them a target. Yes, and we see Yoda be Yoda and continue to teach as he always does. I don't know if any of you watched like the featurette on this episode. Oh, I didn't. I was going to and I forgot. I did not. I would recommend it. They're usually not too long, like five minutes maybe. Um, and they just um, use the Dave Filoni will just kind of talk about, I'll just go through the episode kind of and explain why they, they did things a certain way or explain kind of the design, design decisions behind uh, this planet that they're on. And, nice. Yeah, it's, it's some, some good stuff. Would recommend. But uh, Daniel, this is your first actual Clone Wars episode. Yeah, I mean, it's similar to the movie, so I guess I kind of I got a feel for it last time. But yeah, it um I was surprised this first episode just was entirely revolved around Yoda. I got that we were going to just continue on with Anakin and Ahsoka mm-hmm. as the main characters in the show. But yeah, they kind of they kind of jump around. So I it, it feels like they're just these like one-off episodes, but still interesting. Yeah. I feel like a lot of the early episodes were doing it that way on purpose, yep. weren't they? Just hopping around. I think a lot of them are just kind of individual stories by themselves. Well, the next um, three um, are all about the malevolence, and we'll okay once we watch those, we'll get to see. But that's kind of a, a an overarching story arc. But yeah, this one, and I feel like a couple of these are just small little ones to start off with. I guess that's a good point. I didn't, I didn't really know. I guess I assumed they were gonna do more with the mill. Malevolence, I don't know how to say it. Malevolent. Malevolence. Okay. But like some of the later ones definitely get more, like they almost leave you hanging. It's like all a continued story. Mm-hmm. Whereas this one is an overlying theme, but it still kind of felt like it ended, right? Episode two. Episode two, yeah, sorry. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that one. I don't, am I jumping ahead? Yeah. <laughs> a little, yeah. <laughs> I think it's already everything, you know. <laughs> Next week, we'll talk about that next week <laughs> oh okay okay don't worry we get we'll get to see jar jar soon enough wow can't wait. <laughs> great i can't i'm wait. actually looking forward to that i actually think that i like him as a cartoon uh, <laughs> yes. you can disagree with me when we get to those episodes. yeah <laughs> we'll, we'll have a, i'll have my two cents to say <laughs> i mean he's still terrible but i think it just works better in a cartoon but that's not relevant to this episode either. Um, oh, we see that Count Dooku has sent Asajj Ventress here to like also negotiate um, some terms to set up like their own outpost. I guess I just think it's interesting. Like they're you know f- fighting for control of different sectors of the galaxy. I assume here and and uh, it seems like a little bit silly to have like actually just have both Yoda and Ventress on the planet at the same time, just like arguing about who should be in control here but but then like it's it's the toydarians and then it's kind of like okay <laughs> like you know that that's that's how they work <laughs> right mm-hmm. they're all about trade that, that mm. was kind of funny <laughs> exactly it's like who's gonna give us the best deal here yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> funny that does make sense now that you mention it right. yeah it's like they're not gonna sway them with like i don't know they're not gonna, gonna jump on one side they it you know, they want to be yeah, persuaded, yeah. like, huh, why should I join you, either of you? We should mention, for those who aren't um, fully versed, Toydarians are the blue flying creatures like Watto, who, in episode one, who owned Anakin as the slave. Those are Toydarians. And mind tricks don't work on them, famously. Don't work on them. <laughs> Only money. <laughs> Only money. Or whatever they do here. Only persuasion. And who knew they had their whole, their own planet? With, like, a king and apparently three subjects. <laughs> That's all we see. They're not on Toydaria. They're on, a, they're on a neutral moon. That's all we ever see. Oh, really? Yeah. Don't, you, you uh, go, they do go to Toydaria later on in several episodes. I didn't pick up on that. I totally thought this is just their planet and, like, where is everybody? <laughs> all right. I get it now. Ugh, actual Toydaria looks like a swamp pit. Ugh. Nice. That's, that's what, they didn't want to... They want to show them their home because they'd be like, oh, forget about joining these guys. Yeah, yeah. We don't want that. <laughs> we don't want a base on that. Topic. They met on a really beautiful side moon. <laughs> yeah, it was a nice place. Toydaria was the homeworld of the Toydarians who created muck nests and lived in the atmosphere of muck lakes. Gross. Ugh. I don't even want to know anymore <laughs> about them. Anyways. <laughs> Man, wh- why does do these guys fight over them? <laughs> yeah. It's a strategic military location. Oh, that makes that makes a lot more sense. It's like how 
We're always claiming random islands during World War II. Right. Yeah. Every time that war happens. Yep. <laughs> Which, this is not relevant at all to Star Wars, but did you know we still, uh, America still owns or at least claims a whole lot of random little islands that nobody lives on? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Out the in the Pacific. middle of the Pacific Ocean. Yeah. yeah. I was looking them up one time because they're like little little pockets of our country that nobody even knows exists. But I guess if you had your own private yacht, you could go and look at it. There is one that's just like totally been taken over by like seagulls or goose, geese. Or oh, that's right. I remember you looked at that on Google Maps one time, right? Yeah, it's oh, crazy. Yeah. Just birds covering it. Much like Toydarians cover their own planet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, way to segue us back on topic. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah. I also thought it was interesting that they're starting the whole series off with a Yoda episode. Mm. Like, even if they are going to jump around a lot, I wondered why they didn't start with uh, Anakin. That's what I was saying. Like, after the movie, it seemed weird to not continue. But if you consider the movie is actually the first three episodes... Then it feels mm. like it makes more sense. Yeah, when you look at it that way. Yeah. You guys who have seen this whole thing, remind. Tell me if I'm right about this, but doesn't the very last episode of this of the series revolve around Yoda also? No. I'm sorry. Not if you not counting the new season that they just made. Like the oh, original. Oh right, run. season six. No idea. I think so. I believe that's and those are some crazy episodes. They're great. Okay. Yeah, it is. Well, I'm not going to say what they're about, but just uh, just saying, if that's the case, then does that make Yoda the real main character <laughs> of this series? Something to think about. I, I don't think so, but... It's the real main but character. You could say that. If you could argue it, I guess. Okay. I'm not going to argue it too hard, but it's just <laughs> a thought. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but um, I know when they were in the, talking about the featurette, Dave Filoni was talking about how they're trying to bring out Yoda's teacher in, in this you know, his inner teacher about how that's kind of what he naturally does. He just naturally goes, starts teaching lessons. And so that's what he's doing with these clones. Yeah. You know, I really liked that scene of him talking with his, uh, his clone yeah. helpers when they're at their camp. Mm -hmm. That's good stuff. He was, um, getting to know them individually and he's, he's telling them all like the force resides in you just like it does in every other living thing, which t to me sounds like he's, saying the clones have souls like you are humans you're not just like oh well, yeah random they robots we made well definitely do yeah well, i mean i don't know that seems like they don't always get into that yeah. the movie kind of treats them like they're just this army that is just a convenient thing for us sometimes the clones see themselves that way too which oh I, yeah because they they say like not much to see here we all look we all look the same we all have the same face yoda's like no no like in the force i can see each of you very distinctly all their own mm -hmm. personality words for each of them yeah yeah it was cool and he's teaching them if everything has the force like you know, the force is in everything i guess but is there anything stopping any one clone from being force sensitive <laughs> right oh. <laughs> like There's what's stopping idea. him hmm. you know? that's a good point <laughs> maybe there are some all right although they, they they grow up pretty quick so they'd have to train them right away mm -hmm. but mm. no i don't know or, or they could uh, become a jedi later in life in their short life but maybe there's a story there somewhere could be mm. interesting <laughs> good observation <laughs> <laughs> no, i think that's interesting i mean you're right mm -hmm. i don't see any reason why they couldn't yeah are we going to see these specific clones more in the series? Um, I don't think uh, these guys show up that often because they're, they're Coruscant Guard, the red. Okay. So they're mainly based in Coruscant. He called them by name. Yeah, they might show up. I mean, I think yeah, so. I was noticing they all have like these sigils on their, their shoulder pauldrons. Mm -hmm. I noticed that in the, the Clone Wars movie too. Like actually Anakin and Obi-Wan had like the Jedi emblem on their armor. Oh yeah, yeah. Hmm. I just don't. I, I love. I love like those kinds of symbols, but uh, I don't know what they all mean. So I'm curious. <laughs> yeah, and honestly, I don't. I remember never quite being sure which clone was which. I had a hard time <laughs> with this. <laughs> the, so maybe this time through, I'll see if I can keep track of them a little bit better. Yeah, like there's a bunch where I'm like, I should probably know who these guys are, but I have no idea. <laughs> All yeah. right, cool. So it's the red ones are Coruscant Guard? Yep. Sweet. Red ones are Coruscant Guard. You should, yeah, I'm sure you can find a list of them all. 
Here's their logo anyway. It looks awesome. Wow. Yep. Nice. Galactic Ooh. Republic. Right. That is There's awesome. some weird letters above that in a foreign language. Right. The next most common language other than English. Basic. British. It's British. <laughs> it's, it's British. <laughs> British, have English. British accents. Not, not the clones. The clones are in New Zealand? Right. Yeah, yeah New Zealand. Europe. And they're all voiced by literally one guy. Yeah. <laughs> literally one voice actor does all of them. Really? <laughs> yeah. Talk about job security. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, seriously. And in one of the episodes, they're like, it's literally just him just going crazy because he's doing like the voices for everyone because it's like all clones. <laughs> no way. That's awesome. Hey, go ahead, kill my character yeah. off. We'll make another one. It's like, <laughs> like yeah, in this episode, you have 300 lines. <laughs> wow, yeah, he's got to be doing more work than any of the others, yeah, yeah. any of these voice actors. Playing 10 different characters. He's just huh. talking to himself the whole time. Jim Carrey, also starring Jim Carrey. <laughs> and Jim Carrey. I think that was uh, a series of unfortunate events. Series of, yeah, that's how the trailer played it. <laughs> I'll have to listen for that now and see if he does his voice differently for different clones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it does. Slight personality differences. One of the other symbols you'll see quite a bit is like a wolf symbol for the wolf pack. Those are uh, mm -hmm. Plo Koon's um, clones. They got like this cool like wolf symbol a lot of times on their helmets. All right. I think they did a nice job with Yoda, his character. I liked that he had his little mischievous laugh. All right. Yeah, I felt like there was a good mix of Yoda from the uh, original movies and then like the more battle serious yep. guy from the previous. Yeah, just kind of mm -hmm. his, his goofy old self and like he just has such a interesting way of doing things. He'll like sit down in the middle of a battle and just meditate and not tell them what the clones what he's doing. I don't know. Yeah, and he purposely doesn't tell them. He just right. kind of is like, <laughs> "Oh, you'll know what to do." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah, thank you. I can do Yoda much better than Watto. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We see Yoda goes pretty nuts. He has some pretty there's some pretty brutal moments with the droids. Where he's just slice them and dice them. I thought of that. <laughs> like the scene where like they try to run out of the tank and they're like running away. Yeah, <laughs> he yeah. just pulls them back in with the force and just slices them up. That, that first group of Bowser he takes out, he makes them they all just shoot each other. Right after he's been talking to the clones about their individuality, he clearly doesn't feel the same way about the droids. Right? No, well, no. Just saying, because <laughs> the droids seem to have their individual selves too. <laughs> oh yes. The way they talk to each other. They're machines. Yeah. One of them is like a terrible aim, and the guy says, "Um, or is that the second episode?" No, oh, yeah, the, it's this one. He's like, "What a terrible shot!" <laughs> it's my programming. It's my programming. That's what's They are literally uh, programmed uh, to be terrible. Yeah. <laughs> well, good programming costs money. Plus, you know, you have to keep up, especially if you're making copies of that AI program over and over. It just degrades over time and personality quirks develop. I think he's just making excuses. Yeah. I, <laughs> I wonder if uh, Palpatine was, like, never actually on the front line seeing how these droids worked. All this money they're putting into them, and like they're so <laughs> bad. Terrible. Like, right. <laughs> maybe we should put a little more money into some that actually are doing something. If his whole plot was derailed because of like, like, uh, incompetent droid design, <laughs> the clones just like the clones just wipe them out like instantly. <laughs> <laughs> it's just over. They're just that bad. I mean, they are that bad. I think they just they make up for it in numbers. Apparently. Well, yeah, exactly. Do yeah. they make up for it in numbers? <laughs> Right. I mean, Yoda took out like an entire army. It's kind of just, they just make it, you know. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they can't do anything. The king of Toydaria says that one Jedi is worth a thousand. Yeah, droids. he did say that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, two thousand droids. <laughs> <laughs> thousand and one. Right. They'll kill a Jedi, no problem. <laughs> right. Oh, I also think it would be. I'm going to pretend that that droid's name is Roger. That's why they're always right. answering him. Roger, Roger. It's your vector, Victor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Clarence, Clarence. Well, I don't know. Is there anything else that we need to do? Or I suppose like these are nice short episodes now, so we don't need to spend like two hours talking about no, them. No, we can be pretty brief. We could, but 
we don't have to. Yeah, it, I mean, it probably just depend, depends on the episode. Mm-hmm. I'd have a lot to say about the first one. Oh, yeah. It's a good time. I'm excited to go through these again. They're fun. Yeah, yeah. I, um, any last thoughts on this one? I don't really have a lot else to say. I guess at the end, Yoda actually does talk to Ventress. He's also there with the Twintarian King. Mm-hmm. had a few lines to say, something like... Classic Yoda lines, pretty much. Much to learn, young one. He uses a force pole to just take her lightsabers away, disarms her easily. Oh, yeah. (laughs) She's not even close to a match for Yoda. Like, he's not even trying. She has to pull down a cliffside to escape. Much to learn you still have, which is exactly what he says to Dooku. Oh, and that was interesting, too. Yeah, Yoda's, like, in the holog... Or, uh... No, I'm talking to like Dooku hologram because yeah, Dooku was Yoda's apprentice, right? And that was something in that that uh, audio book that I listened to, like kind of see you know Dooku's relationship with Yoda. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. There's a lot there, a lot of depth there. So too much to go into in this podcast. We'll do a whole <laughs> podcast on that radio drama. Yeah, we could. That'd be fun. Yeah. Or I'll reveal it. I'll sprinkle it in a little in it every episode. Of this. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, uh, thanks for joining us, and we'll be back next time with uh, episode two, which is The Rising Malevolence. And remember, great leaders inspire greatness in others, mm. oh. as the beginning of the episode told us. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a little it was inspirational quote. Wisdom, yes. So go out there and be great leaders. Mm-hmm.